I had grand old plans to go into the backcountry for a great big epic backpacking trip. Well, I didn't get to go as I was planning to do. It was something that I had planned for a year, you know, roughly a year, and then for six months, I began to really iron out the details of what the trip was going to look like and everything. So, planned for a year, really intensely planning for it for six months. It was really disappointing to me. The way it worked out, it had to do with arrangements on my side, all right? So I was supposed to go with my buddy Jeff. He's in the city, about an hour and a half, two hours north of me, waiting for me to come pick him up. The day comes, I load up the bacon. Uh, that's, you know, what I call the Jeep Wrangler that I drive. So I load up the bacon with my gear. I get or a ornery horse and my dog in the, in the bacon with me start the engine sitting in my driveway i send my friend uh, jeff a message i say hey buddy i'm i'm pulling out of the driveway right now and then i start getting some other messages and uh the messages that i was getting completely ruined my plans i realized that i wasn't going to be able to do this trip and i was sitting there trying to come up with a solution because i'm thinking you you got to be kidding me there's got to be a solution that I can get this issue fixed and and still get up there and pick up old Jeffrey so that we can drive to the mountains. And there was no solution. And it, I was very disappointed. I can't tell you how disappointed I was. It felt like a divorce or something. It was that level of disappointment. And I remember I come back in once I realized I wasn't going to be able to go. And I just felt like that, like that enormous sadness and disappointment uh, whole thing shot and uh, it was embarrassing too I can't tell you how embarrassing it was after I had just sent him that message he's waiting on me he's expecting me to come pick him up and we're going to take this big week long trip so it was a big commitment and you know he had set aside all that time and of course I had set aside all that time I thought I had all my arrangements in place and then to have to call him and tell him, listen, I, we're not going to be able to do this. It was just very, it was embarrassing. It was really embarrassing. I felt terrible about it, having to cancel my plan, uh, the plans on my friend at the very last minute like that, who's waiting for me. So if you're curious about how I deal with this sort of disappointment, <laughs> like I said, it was like somebody called and broke up with me. I sat around for a real long time uh, in the bacon in my driveway with the engine still running. I, I couldn't even get out. I was that disappointed, <laughs> that deflated. I didn't even want to get out of my truck. I sat around for a while. I kept trying to figure out if there was any solution for it. You know, I didn't want to send him a message and say, no, I can't do this trip now. Him started unloading his stuff and making other plans and then me realize, oh, there's a solution to this. So I just sat and waited for a while. I tried to think through any possible solution I could think of and there, there just wasn't none. So after that, how did I deal with my disappointment? Well, I accepted my own responsibilities and failures in the thing. Uh, that's an art. It's not a pleasant art, but it is an art. Are you able to do that? When you're intensely disappointed with other people and the way things have turned out in, a, in any given situation, right? It is natural to want to point the finger, to want to look at the people who have let you down. But it's a real art to be able to turn that finger around and choose instead to consider your own failures in the thing. It's very tempting to say, Gosh, they let me down. They let me down. I'm never going to trust them again. This is all their fault. The art comes in, where the art of the whole thing comes in, is me turning that finger around and saying, all right, why didn't you have a backup? Why didn't you plan for that possibility? As tempting as it is to point the finger at at the people who let me down, it, I really let myself down is what it is. So, you know, um, I learned from that. This is a really nice life lesson for, for me, but also for you. Number one, 
resist the urge to point the finger at other people. Try to always point the finger at yourself first and uh, your own failures. What did you fail to do that could have made the situation different? I sat around for a short while accepting my own responsibility and my own failures. Still felt like a breakup and I was still very sad about it, but that's what it did. The fact is, is that there was more I could have done to ensure that things would go off without a hitch and I just didn't live up to that. So then I sat around thinking about, well, what could I have done differently? What will I do differently in the future? Again, I resisted urges to point the finger at others and I reminded myself that I'm an adult. I'm an adult free agent. Everything goes wrong in my life, it's up to me. Everything goes right in my life, I get to take credit for it. But it's not just a one-way street there. Nobody else is responsible for my failures. So I had to sit and marinate in that for a little bit. How do you think that felt? (laughs) To sit and marinate in the reality that nobody else is responsible for my failures. Well, it's not pleasant, but I'll tell you, reminds me of a saying I heard back when I was old in my twenties or something. I didn't understand it then. I understand it now uh, that children take pleasure in the pursuit of pleasure. Adults take pleasure in the fulfillment of responsibility. Well, you know, you can break that down and also say that adults take pleasure in the in in identifying what their true responsibilities are and accepting them even if we fail at them because if you if you can do that even if you fail at a responsibility the beautiful thing about it is you can evaluate the situation and say okay well how will i avoid that in the future right it's a beautiful thing Mm -hmm.